was December 23rd, 1941, and Denmark was about to enter its second year being occupied by Nazi Germany. The Danish obviously wanted nothing to do with the German oppressors. They didn't want to feed or provide for the German troops, and had no interest in joining Hitler's elite race. But the most that many of the adults would do is just shake their fist to the sky when the planes flew overhead. However, as so often happens, when adults fail to step in, the children and the next generation do. That's exactly what happened here in Nazi-occupied Denmark. Enter the Churchill Club. Nud Peterson was only 17 years old when he founded the Churchill Club. A group of eight teenage boys from Alborg Cathedral School didn't like the way that the country was just giving into the Nazis. So they struck out and started performing acts of vandalism, painting war profiteer and blue paint on the offices and homes of no Nazi sympathizers, as well as spreading the Churchill Club insignia. It was a twisted imitation of the Nazi swastika, except that arrows shooting out of each line, instead for the flames of rebellion to kill all Nazis. As the Churchill Club grew, they spread their scope and their mission. They were just mere vandalism, and actually began stealing weapons from the German soldiers. Granted, they didn't actually know how to use the weapons, but they were hell-bent on taking them just for the fact that the Nazis wouldn't have them. Eventually, though, the Churchill Club did find a good use for all the weapons, made a series of explosives in order to blow up their Alborg rail yard. The initial rail car that they had attacked contained airplane wings, and as the fire spread through the rail yard, the Danish firemen didn't pitch in and help, severely damaging the German supplies and hampering their post in Alborg. But try as hard as you can, you can't stay hidden forever, especially if you're causing the kind of damage and destruction the Churchill Club was. Only a week after the rail yard attack, Members of the club were arrested while attempting to steal more German weapons. They were all eventually tried and convicted for their actions, but none of them were executed and all received relatively light sentences, probably because of the young age. For instance, the leader Nud Peterson was only sentenced to three years inside Nyborg State Prison. However, don't be fooled into anything that mere German soldiers in prison bars were to stop the Churchill Club. Even in the confines of prison, members of the Churchill gang would escape at night and attack patrolling German military cars. In fact, the boys were able to escape from prison 19 straight nights in a row before they were caught. Even after being released from prison at the end of the sentences, many of them still didn't give up the cause and kept on fighting. Now, they will join the British Special Operations Executive, an organization that worked with European resistance groups. The job being able to move ammo, weapons, and explosives from hiding place to hiding place so the Germans couldn't detect them. The Churchill Club actually kept on operating and kept on fighting all up until May 4th, 1945, when Germany finally surrendered and their occupation was over. A few years later, the Churchill Club actually even met their namesake, Winston Churchill, at a dinner in their honor, where Churchill was moved by their founding and everything they'd done for the war effort. And honestly, I'm moved by their story, too. The idea that these kids would stand up and fight for what they believed was right, regardless of the cost or what others around them were doing, is truly inspiring. It's stories like this why I love history.